Hi, I'm Gagan. Understanding SOC reports is crucial for passing your certification exams like CISSP and essential for your success as a cybersecurity professional. These frameworks are key to know how organizations verify their security measures and build trust with their customers. First, let's understand what are SOC reports. So SOC or System and Organization Control Reports are frameworks developed by American Institute of CPAs, that's Certified Public Accountants, to help service organizations demonstrate their compliance and control effectiveness. First, let's understand two key terms, service provider and user entity. Service provider is a company that provides services to other businesses. Examples include cloud hosting providers, payment processors, data centers, SaaS companies or HR management systems. User entity refers to the customer organizations that uses the service provider's services. The user entity relies on the service provider's systems and controls as part of their own operations. SOC reports essentially answer the question, can user entities trust their service providers with their sensitive data and critical operations? As a cybersecurity professional, you will likely encounter these reports when assessing vendor security, preparing your own organization's audits, demonstrating compliance to client or partners. SOC 1 reports focus specifically on a service organization's internal controls that could impact the financial reporting of their user entities. SOC 1 reports are primarily intended for auditors and financial stakeholders. They contain highly detailed information about control objectives and tests and their distribution is restricted to authorized users only. The internal controls being evaluated include systematic safeguards, policies, and procedures designed to ensure accuracy and reliability of financial information as it flows through the service provider's systems. For example, if a company uses payroll service provider, errors in the provider's systems could affect the company's financial statement. The SOC 1 report would verify that the payroll provider has proper controls to ensure accurate processing of transactions, data integrity, and appropriate access controls for financial information. SOC 1 reports come in two varieties, Type 1 and Type 2. Type 1 is point-in-time assessment. It evaluates whether controls are suitably designed, and it's like a snapshot of controls on a specific date. The Type 2 report covers a specified period, typically 6 to 12 months. It evaluates both design and operating effectiveness. It also includes testing of controls over the entire period. These are generally considered more valuable for financial auditing. SOC 1 reports have limited relevance to cybersecurity specifically, but understanding them is still important for a security professional especially when working with finance departments or auditors. SOC 2 reports are much more relevant to cybersecurity professionals. These reports evaluate service organizations' controls related to the trust services criteria. The trust services criteria include security, that is protection against unauthorized access, both physical and logical. This includes how the organization implements firewalls access control, intrusion detection, and vulnerability management. The trust services criteria also includes availability, system availability for operation and use as committed or agreed. This covers disaster recovery, backup systems, monitoring, and how the organization handles outage. Another criteria is processing integrity. That is system processing is complete, accurate, timely, and authorized. This ensures that data processing works as intended without errors, manipulation, or delays. Another criteria is confidentiality. Information designated as confidential is protected according to policy. This includes encryption, data classification, and proper handling of sensitive information. And the fifth criteria is privacy. Personal information is collected, used, retained, and disclosed in accordance with the organization's privacy notice and principles. SOC 2 reports are intended for customers, business partners, and regulators. They are highly detailed with specific control implementations and test results. 
it is really important to understand that their distribution is restricted to those with a need to know. Cloud service providers, SaaS companies, and data centers typically undergo SOC 2 audits to demonstrate their commitment to security and privacy. As a cybersecurity professional, you will frequently evaluate vendors' SOC 2 reports to assess their security posture. SOC 2 reports also come in two varieties, Type 1 and Type 2. Type 1 is point-in-time assessment. It evaluates whether security controls are suitably designed. It provides a snapshot of security posture on a specific date. SOC 2 Type 2 reports covers a specified period, typically 6 to 12 months. It evaluates both design and operating effectiveness of security controls. It also includes testing of controls over the entire period. These are generally considered more valuable and rigorous for security assessments. As a cybersecurity professional, you should typically prefer type 2 reports when evaluating vendors as they demonstrate consistent control effectiveness rather than a one-time compliance effort. Then is SOC 3 reports. SOC 3 reports cover the same trust services criteria as SOC 2 but with a crucial difference. They are designed for public consumption. SOC 3 provide a high-level overview without revealing sensitive details about specific controls. These are intended for the general public and less technical stakeholders. They contain minimal technical details and can be freely distributed and often published on company websites. Organizations often use SOC 3 reports as marketing tools to demonstrate their commitment to security without revealing the technical details that might create security vulnerabilities if made public. Let's summarize the key differences between these report types. First is the focus area. While SOC 1 concentrates only on financial controls, both SOC 2 and SOC 3 address broader security and privacy concerns that are central to cybersecurity. SOC 1 reports are primarily designed for financial auditors. SOC 2 reports are intended for businesses evaluating their vendors and regulators assessing compliance. SOC 3 reports are designed for marketing and public consumption. Both SOC 1 and SOC 2 provide in-depth technical details about controls and testing results. SOC 3 offers only high-level summaries without revealing specific security implementations. SOC 1 and SOC 2 reports contain sensitive information and require confidentiality agreements before sharing. SOC 3 reports are specifically designed for public distribution without security risks. Additionally, remember the important distinction between Type 1 and Type 2 reports. Type 1 are point in time, whereas Type 2 are period of time, typically 6 to 12 months. The Type 1 only checks if controls are well designed on paper, while Type 2 also verifies if they actually work effectively in practice over time. Type 1 involves limited testing procedures, while Type 2 includes extensive sampling, observation, and testing throughout the covered period. Due to these differences, Type 2 provides significantly higher confidence or assurance that an organization's control are reliable and sustainable. As a cybersecurity professional, SOC 2 Type 2 reports will likely be the most relevant to your day-to-day -day work. But understanding all report types will make you more effective when communicating with different stakeholders. Let's recap what you need to know about the SOC reports for your cybersecurity career and if you're preparing for cybersecurity certifications. SOC 1 focuses on financial controls and reporting integrity. They're critical when evaluating vendors that handle financial data. Their knowledge is essential when you're working with the finance teams. SOC 2 addresses the five trust services criteria. It is the most valuable tool for a vendor security assessment and the gold standard for evaluating cloud and SaaS providers. SOC 3 are public-facing versions of SOC 2. They are useful for initial vendor screening and less valuable for in-depth security evaluation. Between Type 1 and Type 2, always prefer Type 2 reports for greater assurance. Type 2 demonstrates sustained compliance rather than point-in-time efforts. Understanding these differences will help you better evaluate vendor security, improve your company's security, and make you more effective when working with other departments 
and also be better prepared to deal with questions in cybersecurity certifications like CISSP. I hope you found this helpful. I'll see you in the next cybersecurity video. Thanks.